We just now getting a little bit of. It's our first red tomato, right? No, you ate a little bit of one a while back, remember? Yeah, but it the was. The other one turned red. Yeah, right. We're happy about our red. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding you. It's really a great tomato. I'm not sure. We we have Celebrity and Celebrity Plus. I don't know if there's any difference in them or if they're, you know, but it's one of those. That's two. really good tomato. Celebrity celebrity really, plus. really, really good. It's almost got a really, uh, most like a sweet taste to it. We can't fit in too much anymore, can we? The pumpkin's taking over. This tomato is starting to turn. Uh-oh, something's eating this tomato. It's a worm. Oh. One of y'all just asked the other day, too, how do I deal with the tomato worms, and I had not seen any, and then here we go. We have one right here. See that? Let me make sure I don't see any others. Got a big, pretty cluster over here. No worms, just tomatoes. That's good. Oh, what did you found it? Hmm. Yeah, it has lots of them, huh? But we don't eat this kind. Yeah, I just crushed one open. Yeah. But they had the prize. Do they smell good? Yeah, it didn't have a prize. Uh-uh. I'll tell you what. These trees, they need to be putting out surprises, don't they? I think those things are ready for picking. You think they're ready for picking? You can pick that one. Okay. Very easy? Yeah, very easy. Just do a little twist. There you go. I got it. You did. What do you think about it? Um, we grew this thing. Yeah, we did. What is it? Um, um, I'm an angel. Yeah, <laughs> tomato. <laughs> Let me try it again. It looks like you can play baseball with this. Yeah, it does look like it, huh? Guys, we had a customer ask us if we'd come out and help her get this young two-year-old started so she can sell her. This little horse is really hard for her to handle, so she's going to try to sell her if she can. All right, so keep in mind, this is never something we use to hurt an animal. 
It's uh, you see a lot of junk on TV that's not real. It's not the way we use it in the real world of cowboy. Whenever we're using a rope, it's to keep the animal from getting hurt or potentially hurting somebody else. The way I'm going to use this is I'm going to put this on the horse and teach her because I could go to her right now and uh, she wouldn't she wouldn't let me catch her and it's very important that we help her to understand that we're not here to hurt her she's got to learn that we're here to try to develop a friendship and a, and a connection with her so she can be more useful when they're that wild a lot of times they're pretty dangerous so they hurt their self they'll run into stuff and you know injure their self one time some time ago i had to come over and rope her and catch her for the veterinarian she jumped the fence and split her head open she's just a really wild horse so um that's what we're trying to do now is to help her to understand not to be that way so This is a little two-year-old Arabian horse. They're built to run, and uh, they're not real heavy bone. They're not real heavy muscled horses either. They're really, really strong for endurance, and we're teaching her how to lunge. Tyler's teaching her how to go to the left, to the right on a, on a cue here. So we'll ask her good right when she steps, and then we just take off the pressure. And that's what they understand. After you do that for a while, they'll get where they'll be faster and better at everything you ask them to do. But it all starts slow. See that? That's the way we do it. All right, hop up there, Tyler. She's ready. This horse ain't never been handled. If you do it right, most of the time they'll never buck you off. That a girl. Good job. Good girl. Girl. Okay, y'all, it is now three, almost 3.30 in the afternoon. I'm gonna go ahead and make some cornbread for supper tonight. We're having hamburger steaks, southern cornbread salad and baked potatoes which reminds me i need to start the baked potatoes do i want to instant pot those or oven i think i'll do oven since i already have to turn it on for the cornbread anyway because i really like the crispy outside that the potato peeling gets when you bake it in the oven so we'll do that but yeah let me get the potatoes real quick we have our cheesecake factory bread too i keep forgetting about this so yeah we might have this with our hamburger steaks and baked potatoes and the cornbread salad I think I'm going to make a sweet potato. Sissy, you want a sweet potato or a regular potato? Sweet. Sweet? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, to get the crispy skin on the outside of them, you don't wrap them in full. You just rub some olive oil or vegetable oil on them, put salt and pepper. Well, pierce them with the fork first or they'll be slipping out of your hand. Then put the oil on them, salt and pepper, put them in the oven. I think something stung me out there, y'all. Yellow jackets especially want to attack me. I've told y'all the yellow jacket story before. I still have nightmares about that experience, for real. In case you missed it, I was on my way to work one morning. Some, let's see, Tyler was a baby. So 14 to 15 years ago. I mean, he, he might have been a year old. So about 15 years ago. It was, I think I was going in at 11 that day because it was already kind of later in the morning. The kids were already awake. Titus had just got in from hauling a load of cattle to probably Texas or Oklahoma or something. So he gets home and I'm leaving to go to work. I step outside, start walking off the porch. We didn't live here at this time, we lived somewhere else. But when I started walking off the porch, this swarm of yellow jackets just came right at me. So I ran inside real quick and I was like, what in the world? I think that first time, I can't remember if they stung me any the first time or not. If they did, it was just like once or twice. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't a big deal. So I calmed down because, you know, it was like so many of them everywhere. I go back out. 
they do it again. They come out of nowhere. I still don't even know where they came from because we looked all up under the steps. We didn't see a nest. I don't know where they came from, but it was just like the plague of Egypt or something out there. <laughs> Only add yellow jackets because that wasn't one of the plagues. But anyway, they attacked me for real. I was stung like 15 to 20 times. It made me feel really sick and the all the places where they stung me like these big knots popped up everywhere like my neck was swollen up out to here just big knots where they stung me so I still went into work I was a couple hours late but I still went into work and everybody was looking at me like girl what happened to you because they stung me all on my face just everywhere it was awful but my neck and my arms where they stung me there was the worst like just they swole up really bad okay now I'm just gonna put these potatoes in a little pan. Now I do line the pan with aluminum foil just for easy cleanup because if you put that oil on the pan without putting any foil it really it messes up your pan so line the bottom of it with foil but just don't wrap the potatoes in it if you want the crispy peeling. Just gonna drizzle them with some olive oil and sweet potatoes I have little ones so they should take just about the same time as these potatoes. Most of the time you know if they're bigger they're definitely gonna take longer than a regular potato but these should this should be fine. Okay, so for the cornbread salad, first we have to make the cornbread. We're using the Three Rivers Cornmeal Mix. This is the first time I was able to find this, and it's really good. To me, it just kind of tastes like Martha White and White Lily, but it's really good. Okay, potatoes are in. The recipe for the cornbread is the same as Martha White or White Lily too, only we don't add the sugar part, and it does say optional on here for the sugar. We don't add that. Okay, Sissy's gonna be making up the cornbread. Oh, and I need to start some tea. This is the cornbread salad recipe. So it's from the Ingalls Table little books. You can get these in the stores at Ingalls. They're free. I've gotten one a couple of times. So this is a page out of one of the Ingalls Table magazines, and it has the whole recipe on here for the Southern cornbread salad. My nose keeps itching, and now I have to sneeze. Hold on, I'm so sorry. What in the world? I guess it's the pepper. It must be the pepper from the potatoes. Anyway, look how good it looks. It looks really, really good. The only thing that we might, is that croutons? Cause this didn't say anything about some croutons, but that's croutons. I think we have some anyway. Need help? <laughs> we need ranch mix, sour cream, mayonnaise, pinto beans, tomatoes, red onion, bell pepper, cheddar cheese, canned corn, and bacon pieces. It looks really good. I mean, once you scoop it out of there, it's gonna look kind of messy probably on the plate but it looks really pretty in that. I think it's gonna go good with these hamburger steaks and baked potatoes. So the cornbread is done, it's cooled down. We're gonna go ahead and make the cornbread salad and just put it in the refrigerator until we're ready to eat. We don't have one of these clear trifle bowls like they used here, so we're just gonna use this clear bowl. Y'all watch, as soon as we start cooking, those guineas are gonna go wild up there. They normally do. <laughs> right when we come out here, they'll go to acting crazy. I'm gonna make the gravy out here too, so I'm gonna start the meat, there they go. I'm gonna use the steak king top house blend on these. I told y'all, they get excited when we start cooking out here. 